Body Positive Health and Fitness Coach Jillian here with a rather alarming video title. You don't have to exercise to be healthy. Say what? <laughs> this might sound a bit surprising coming from a kinesiologist and personal trainer who's been in the industry for nearly 25 years and is a pretty big fan of the science. But the truth is, while exercise is awesome, it's not the end all be all. Physical activity is. And you might just think, mm, you're getting caught up in words, but there's an important distinction I want to make. And also, words matter. We integrate them. Let me explain. The evidence support for being physically active is huge. If you want to know more about the research and explore it, awesome. I would love to share you share some resources with you. But for now, I want to get back to my main point of this video, which is that you don't have to exercise to be healthy. Here's the rub. Our bodies were designed to move and they genuinely perform better when we do. And historically, we did move a lot more than we do now. A hundred years ago, we moved more in our day-to-day -day lives just to do the activities of daily living. So as we became collectively more evolved in terms of our technology, we also became more sedentary and we saw a rise in more of the health issues associated with being sedentary. About 50 years ago, in an effort to get folks moving, this new industry called the fitness industry was born. And the intention was to solve the problem of being sedentary. But this very regimented approach of getting folks active didn't work for the vast majority. This is because this connection was made between being active and be having less health risks. With, and with that came this new industry and their regimented approach and the conflation of fitness and health and a whole lot of guilt and shame if you're not on it. There's a lot to unpack here, but the t big take home I hope you hear today is this. There is a difference between being active to support your physical and mental health and exercising. The way I like to break it down is this. When I talk with clients about movement, I generally break it into two categories, physical activity and exercise. Physical activity is anything you do to get your with your body that gets it moving, that gets your heart pumping and you're breathing more deeply. This includes things like cleaning, gardening, dancing, running errands on your foot, on your bike, taking the dog for a walk around the block, anything that gets you going. Exercise is more intentional. It has a focus on building specific fitness outcomes. It tends to be goal focused, but it doesn't have to be. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. The research points to the benefits of being active. How you do it is up to you. Exercise might be how you choose to be more active. Hitting the gym or doing hit might be convenient for your lifestyle and you might genuinely enjoy it. Awesome. But if you don't love exercise, I want to invite you to consider that being generally active throughout your day and week is enough. Copious amounts of research point to the accumulation of about 150 minutes per week, ideally spread out over the course of the week in bursts of about 10 minutes or so. But don't get too hung up on the numbers because our bodies don't work that way. Anytime you hear a recommendation like that, remember it's a guideline, not a quota. Give or take. What they found is the optimal return on investment of your time and energy in terms of improving your health and well-being is about 150 minutes per week. There's always going to be variants. Remember, most of these things are designed on a bell curve. There's going to be outliers in either direction. So again, guideline, not a quota. Now, especially if you're a woman in middle or later age, also aim to incorporate some activities that load the bones. This helps with the prevention of osteoporosis and is also great for maintaining muscle mass and functional movement as you age. Here's the real bottom line. If you love exercise and it works for your body and your life, carry on. If you don't, I'm inviting you to take yourself 
out of the pressure cooker and shift your focus to simply moving, simply being more active. Try incorporating activities into your life that get your heart pumping, increase your breathing rate, and whenever possible, help you build and maintain the strength of your muscles and bones. Find what works with your real life and what feels good to you. If you've got questions, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to me at Jillian at superu.ca or you can check out the link in the video notes about all the details from here on out. And if you're curious to learn even more, I've got a great free workshop you might want to check out. That link also down below.